people. You are welcome. Amen. So, Michael and his wife, you can rise up. Amen. God bless you for coming. We really appreciate you coming. Come, come forward. Come forward. Come forward. Come forward. Come forward. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You can turn and face the church. Amen. You know, the last time he, he came to invite us for the wedding, he came here and after the wedding, he still came back. Amen. That will show you how he has been brought up in the church. Amen. We just thank God for him and the life of, his, of the wife. Amen. So we want to leave them before the Lord. That as the Lord has brought these ones together, the Lord will perfect everything that concerning them in Jesus' name. We want to pray for the union. The union shall be blessed of the Lord in Jesus' name. Let us pray. We take an exception for them in regards to the marriage in this country. Talking about divorce, talking about separation, that will not be their portion. The peace of God will reign in their home. Peace of God. Peace of God in the name of Jesus. The hand of the Lord shall be mighty upon this home. No plan, no imagination of an enemy concerning this family shall stand. Only the counsel of God will stand in their home. The Lord will perfect that which concerning them. All that they lay their hands to do, they will prosper and they will excel. In the name of Jesus Christ. That which you have started, the Lord will complete. Your medical program, you complete in the name of Jesus Christ. The hand of the Lord shall be mighty upon you. And the grace of God will abound more and more. You continually shine. In Jesus' name we pray. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this couple. We just ask, oh God, Lord, in blessing, you will bless them. Your hand shall be mighty upon them. No evil eye shall focus upon them in Jesus' name. Oh Lord God, we are asking, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh Father, we are praying that indeed, oh Lord God, great things you will do in their lives in Jesus' name. Lord, we are asking your protection will be shown over them in Jesus' name. The desire of their heart you grant unto them in the name of Jesus. Father, in your house, you use them to the glory and to the honor of your name in Jesus' name. They will be a weapon, they will be, they will be a vessel of honor unto you in Jesus' name. Father, I will give you thanks and give you praise. Their testimony will abound in your presence in Jesus' name. When next they come here, they will come here, O oh Lord, with blessings and with testimonies in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, for, thank you very much for coming. God bless you. Amen. You can have a seat. Um, praise the Lord. Let's clap for them. Let's clap for them. Amen. Praise the Lord. Lest I forget. Uh, please, um, do we have anyone fellowship with us for the first time today? Today is your first time fellowship with us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, yeah, still have two more quick announcements. I won't ask you to come up, but you can stand up, uh, Brian Oche. Brian Oche wants the church to pray for him because he's traveling to Ghana. Amen. So let's just let's just uh, pray for him as he's going. The presence of the Lord will go with him, and the Lord will bring him back safely in Jesus' name. He's going to spend about a month. We just want to pray that the hand of the Lord will be mighty upon him in Jesus' name. Let's pray for our brother, Brian Oche, as he's been living during this week. The hand of the Lord will be upon him in the name of Jesus. We cover him with the blood of Jesus. No evil eye will focus upon him in the name of Jesus. Are there people he ought not to meet? Even if he plans to meet them, they, they will not cross paths in the name of Jesus. The Lord will order his step and he will yield to your spirit in all that he does. Over there, in Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you for our brother that will be traveling this week to Ghana. Your prince will go with him. And you bring him back here safely with testimonies in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. You can have a seat. Lastly, we thank the Lord for what the Lord is doing in our midst. Amen. 
even as we have a wedded couple that came over here to uh, just uh, to fellowship with us, God has added to us again. Amen? As he has promised that he will increase us. Amen? You know, just during the week we learned about a miracle of increase. Amen? And the Lord is increasing us. Amen? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Just want to bring to your notice that uh, our brother, Brother John, and Sister Love had a baby on Monday. Amen. They had a baby boy on Monday. Amen. So we thank the Lord for what the Lord is doing. And greater things the Lord will do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So let's rise up and pray for them. Let's pray for this baby. Let's thank the Lord for the safe delivery. And let's pray that the hand of the Lord be upon the baby and the entire family. Let's thank the Lord for our general superintendent that has been a blessing unto us. Greater things the Lord will do in his family. His joy will be full. Concerning every member of his household, his joy shall be full. His joy shall be full. His joy shall be full. This one shall grow in the knowledge and the fear of God, in the wisdom of God. In Jesus' name we pray. So shall it be. Amen. Amen. As we are with the message now, let us pray that the Lord will speak unto us this morning. Praise the Lord. We are here to serve the Lord with joy and cheerfulness and happiness. I said, praise the Lord. The Lord implant, hallelujah, in your life. Hallelujah, in your family. Joy and gladness all the days of your life in Jesus' name. Now, we come to a passage today. The people there, those who reach, they see death. I see life. They see oppression. I see upliftment. They see sorrow. But I see the joy of the Lord coming upon the children of God in Jesus' name. Whenever you read anything in the Gospels, always try and get the Gospel, good news, glad news out of the passage. That's what we're going to do today. In the passage we'll read, I'm, I'm still going to pray, don't think I forgot. In the passage we'll read, we'll see Herod, but we'll see somebody higher than Herod. We'll see John, how John was imprisoned, and then one lady, foreign lady, lady in darkness, that has not known the light of the gospel, demanded for his death. But you know, that made John, he was here now, the very next minute, he was up in heaven. No prolonged sickness, cancer, tumor, kidney failure, Dialysis going on and on and on. All of a sudden, he moved from earth to heaven. And that's where we're going to go. We'll move from here and we'll move over there in the twinkling of an eye. And then there are people that will think it's life. His ministry was cut short. 
whatever God has put in place, no Herod, no Herodiah can cut it short. He fulfilled his ministry. You, I'm pointing to you there. You will fulfill your ministry in Jesus' name. He was still of all the men that lived from Adam to Enoch to Noah to Moses to Joshua of all the men that lived he was still the greatest that's what Jesus said all that happened the way they happened he was still the greatest and the least in the kingdom that's talking about me I said that's talking about me the least in the kingdom is greater than John the Baptist Amen, Amen. and so that's why what we're talking about today we're bringing the gospel the good news, the glad tidings out of what we we'll find their Father in the name of Jesus. We thank you today that we live at such a time, at such a day, like we're living. Give us wisdom, give us insight, give us inspiration. Give us knowledge and give us the vision that we ought to have so that the way you have ordained will move on until we finish. Every brother here, every sister here, every family here, every boy, every girl, everyone will finish well. They will not be finished until they finish. Yeah. And nobody will put off your light until you finish in Jesus' name. Yeah. Hold everyone's hand and keep on making them grow and go and glow until they totally and truly and faithfully and rewardably finish in Jesus name we well, thank you because we know you have answered in Jesus name we pray and the happy people of God said God bless you we're coming to Matthew chapter 14 and I'm reading from verses 1 and 2. Matthew chapter 14, verse 1. At that time, Herod the Tetrarch had of the fame of Jesus. Verse 2. And said unto his servants, This is John the Baptist. He is risen from the dead. Therefore, mighty works do show forth themselves in him. He heard of Jesus, but he wasn't saved. He heard of the miracles of cure that Jesus was performing. But the miracle of conversion did not come unto him. He heard of Jesus, not only of Jesus, he heard of John. And as he heard of John directly face to face, look at Mark chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 20 there. Mark chapter 6. We're looking at verse 20. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a just man and unholy, and observed him. And when he heard 
him he did many things and heard him gladly there was a time when Herod desired John to speak loved John's preaching and he feared him he knew because he observed him that he was a just man and holy man a truthful man and whatever he said was the truth and actually without being born again he tried to adjust many things you know many people can come and hear many people can come and validate and say that preacher is speaking the truth that preacher is holy that preacher is just that preacher is righteous that does not get them born again many people can even hear gladly and be happy and they say that's my preacher that's my pastor that's my minister and they can do many things and yet not be born again and he heard him gladly and yet he wasn't born again he loved every message message of faith even message of righteousness but when john became specific and he said you've heard me and you've done many things you have observed me and you have heard me gladly can i tell you something that woman you have taken you've taken a wrong step it's not right for you to take another man's wife whether the man is Philly, your brother or any man's wife it's not right for you to take any man's wife that touched a sore spot in his heart and he went back home and he said Herodiah darling honey wife the best of women i can find in the world do you know what john told me today tell me he said it was not right for you to leave your husband and then be married to me he said it wasn't right for me to divorce my wife and then bring you in to replace her John said that and since that time Herodias had a quarrel with John that's where we preachers are when the Lord sends us to tell you the truth you love every other thing about the preacher until he points at your bosom sin and said that's not right whoever does that will perish and then you have a quarrel with the pastor the preacher the minister that you loved before because of sin you know if sin does not come in between you and I in between the congregation and the preacher love will keep on flowing but when somebody backslides and he commits sin and we have to come and say that is backsliding and that will lead you to a lost eternity then uh, hatred begins and fighting begins why did he say that why did he point out why did he even mention my name that was the problem and now Herod said since you have said that to me you have said the last thing you will say you preached your last message i'm going to stop that ministry i'm going to cancel that ministry herod you think you can 
Acts chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 25. Acts 13 verse 25. It tells us, it says, and as John fulfilled his course, Herod did not cut short his course, his ministry, his preaching, his activity. John finished and fulfilled his course. He said, Whom think ye that I am? I am not he. But behold, there cometh one after me. That's what I came to do. I came to reveal. I came to publicize, I came to lift up the one that is to come after me. His name is Jesus. I am the forerunner, but he is the savior. He is the bridegroom. He is the very son of God. He is the lamb of God. And John had done all that the father expected him and sent him to do and as john fulfilled his cause he said whom think he that i am i am not he but behold there cometh one after me whose shoes of his feet are not worthy to lose i finished i go and so you understand when you are serving God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your ma mind, persecution will not cut short your ministry. The wickedness of man will not cut short your ministry. They are hatred because your stand uncompromisingly on the word of God will not cut short your ministry. Once again, you'll fulfill your ministry until you come to the edge of your journey ministerial journey nobody will stop you halfway in jesus name Let, let's come back to matthew now matthew chapter 14 i'm looking at verse 2 matthew chapter 14 verse 2 verse 2 it says and said unto his servants this is John the Baptist. He is risen from the dead. Therefore, mighty works do show forth themselves in him. I'm going to show you, number one, that he was wrong. Number two, that he misplaced his utterance number three he could be right number one he was wrong number two he misplaced what he was hearing number three there is a way he could be right three points were considered in the message the message is mighty works connected with rising from the dead mighty works miracle works miracle, miraculous wonders mighty deeds of the supernatural connected with rising from the dead three things number one number one consistent mighty works before resting in death now herod did not know that you don't have to die and rise before mighty wars can show up and as we look at the old testament and we look at abraham mighty works and we look at moses mighty works and we look at joshua mighty works and we look at elijah mighty works and we look at elisha mighty works and we look at isaiah mighty works before going to rest in death number two christ's mighty works before redemption through death he went to the cross for our redemption and before he went for redemption to die for us he was already doing the mighty works christ's mighty works before 
redemption through death number three conquers mighty works those of us who are now alive you'll be more than a conqueror and the spirit of the conqueror will take root in your life in your soul in your spirit in jesus name we were dead in sins and trespasses and then the grace of god came and quickened us and we rose from the dead you are dead and your life is seen with christ in god and now since you are risen from the dead you desire and you put your affection on things above and not on things on them and because you are alive now risen from the dead spiritually you are connected with power and the conqueror's mighty power mighty works now that you are risen from the dead let's look at them one by one number one we're talking about consistent mighty works before resting in death look at revelation chapter 14 verse 13 revelation chapter 14 verse 13 and i heard a voice from heaven saying unto me right blessed are the dead which die in the lord from henceforth yea says the spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them we do those works before we rest in death look at three things here number one the mighty works of power before death number two the many wonders of prophets in demonstration number three the miraculous word in the prayer of decree all before we sleep all before we rest all before we go to the grave we have those mighty works and many wonders and miraculous work number one the mighty works of power before the deuteronomy chapter 34 i'm reading from verse 10 and there arose not a prophet since in israel like unto moses whom the lord knew face to face he hadn't died yet before death look at verse 11 in verse 11 in all the signs and the wonders which the lord sent him to do in the land of egypt to pharaoh and to all his servants and to all his land then in verse 12 it says and in that mighty hand in that mighty hand in all that mighty hand had in all the great terror which Moses showed in the sight of Israel look at all the signs in Egypt and look at all the signs and the wonders and the mighty works of God in the wilderness manna every day water out of the rock the defeat of the Amalekites and then turning bitter water of Mara making that sweet and then it says in all of the land of Israel there was not a feeble man feeble woman feeble one among them all mighty works consistent consistent even before death and look at um, look at this in acts chapter 7 reading from verse 22 acts chapter 7 verse 22 and moses was learned in all the wisdom of the egyptians and he was mighty in words and deeds then in luke chapter 24 verse 19 he tells us in luke chapter 24 verse 19 and he said unto them what things and they said unto him concerning jesus of nazareth which was a prophet mighty indeed before he died mighty indeed and word before god and all the people in mark chapter 6 reading from verse 2 mark chapter 6 verse 2 and when the sabbath day was come 
he began to teach in the synagogue and many hearing him was told he's saying from whence at this man these things and what wisdom is this which is given unto him that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands he had not died yet those are consistent mighty works of power before death look at number two here number two the many wonders of prophets in demonstration the many wonders of prophets in demonstration joshua chapter 3 verse 5 in joshua chapter 3 verse 5 here it says that joshua said unto the people sanctify yourselves for tomorrow the lord will do wonders among you good amen give me a better one sanctify yourselves for tomorrow your own tomorrow the lord will do wonders among you that's how as you look at joshua that's how they crossed river jordan divided for them what moses had he had not died yet and the mighty works of dividing the red sea was re was repeated at river jordan mighty works that's how they went around jericho and every war that hindered them from getting into the land the walls came down flat mighty works the wall that separates you from destiny from success from victory from breakthrough today those walls will collapse that's how he went Joshua all those kings and all those confederacies or the mighty works and mighty power of God that's how he defeated them in fact look at this look at Joshua chapter 10 I'm reading from verse 12 Joshua chapter 10 verse 12 then speak Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel and he said in the sight of Israel son as you end stand thou still upon Gibeon and thou moon in the valley of I Jalon. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, and the sun stood still. But he walks. Joshua wasn't dead yet. He was alive. Before he went to rest in death, mighty walk stopping the sun and stopping the moon and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies is not this written in the book of Jesha so the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hasted not to go down about a whole day mighty works look at verse 14 in verse 14 it says and there was no day like that before it or after it that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man for the Lord fought for Israel the Lord will fight for you. Amen. Even if he has to stop a natural law from taking effect until you have the victory, the Lord will keep on fighting for you. In Psalm 105, reading from verses 4 and 5, Psalm 105, verse 4, Seek the Lord and his strength seek his face evermore and then in verse 5 it says remember his marvelous works that he has done his wonders and the judgments of his mouth those mighty works happen before the prophets went to their death the mighty works were done look at number three here number three we're looking at the miraculous words in the prayer of decree
decree miraculous word in the prayer of decree and look at job chapter 22 reading from verse 21 acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace whereby good shall come unto thee verse 22 it says receive i pray thee i plead with you the law from his mouth and lay up his words in thine heart you are not dead yet you're still alive before you go to rest in death and before the right r i p rest in peace while you're still alive receive his law the law of his mouth and then you lay that up in your heart look at verse 23 in verse 23 if thou return to the almighty thou shalt be built up thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacles verse 24 in verse 24 then shalt thou lay up gold as dust are you here your amen yeah. and the gold of offer are the stones of the brooks in verse 25 it says yea the almighty shall be thy defense and thou shalt have and thou shalt have is coming prosperity is coming plenty is coming abundance is coming and thou shalt have plenty of silver look at verse 26 there it says for then shalt thou have thy delight in the almighty and shall lift up thy face unto god 27 it says thou shalt make thy prayer unto him and he shall hear thee today he shall hear thee every day he shall hear thee and thou shalt pay thy vows look at verse 28 in verse 28 thou shalt also decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee i will also decree a thing and it shall be established unto me and the light shall shine upon thy ways darkness will vanish away from your path the powers of darkness will crumble under your feet and your light will shine in all your ways in jesus name the prayer of decree while we're still alive that shall decree a thing and it shall be done unto thee look at first kings chapter 17 verse 1 first king chapter 17 verse 1 and elijah the tishbite who was of the inhabitants of gilead said unto ahab as the lord god of israel liveth before whom i stand there shall not be dew nor rain these years but according to my word that man had the word of decree and that same decree is in your mouth when you declare age in your life it will happen on your family it will happen on your children it will happen say it always say the right thing always say the good thing and good thing will happen to members of your family and members of your local church in jesus name mark chapter 16 verse 20 in mark chapter 16 verse 20 and they went forth and we are going forth I said we're going forth and they preached everywhere the Lord walking up with them and confirming the word were signs following 
Good, good, amen. amen. When you speak in evangelism, when you pray in your contacts and fellowship, and when you touch the lives of people with the word of prayer, the Lord will take that as a decree. It will be fulfilled in their lives in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 7. Acts chapter 14. Reading from verse 7. And there they preached the gospel. Then in verse 8. And there such a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb who never had walked and then in verse 9 it says the same had Paul speak who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed look at the word of prayer the decree now in verse 10 said with a loud voice stand upright on thy feet and he lived and walked. Those days have come back. That you will speak the word of power. And the word of a decree. To the people who have never seen. They will see. Those who have not been walking. They will rise up. They will leap up. And they will walk in Jesus name. The word of a decree. But remember. Remember before you die before you die the word of god must be confirmed in your mouth before you die in jesus name we'll hear testimonies from your outreaches from your evangelism from your publicity and everywhere you go going with the joy of the Lord and the assurance of faith you will not die Herod will not cut short your life he will hear of the great things that the Lord is doing through you in Jesus name John went on record that even though Herod was a frightening, frightful man, angry man, terrible man, wicked man, John went on record that in spite of his hatred, his anger, his negative manifestation of power, John went on record he was not a compromiser. I will go on record. I, I, anywhere I am, anywhere I go, anyone I speak to, I say it, will go on record. I will not be a compromiser. You will not be a compromiser in Jesus' name. Now, Look at point number two. Point number two, Christ's mighty works before redemption through death. Yes, he came to die for us. But before that redemption, through his death on Calvary, he manifested mighty works. Look at that again in Matthew chapter 14 verse 1. At that time, Herod the Tetrarch heard the fame of Jesus. The fame of Jesus as a deliverer. The fame of Jesus as a healer. The fame of Jesus as a savior. The fame of Jesus as a miracle worker. And he couldn't understand that. That's why in verse 2, in verse 2, and said unto his servants, This is John the Baptist. He is risen from the dead. You know, somebody can believe the doctrine of resurrection from the dead and not be born again. 
Somebody can believe the doctrine of healing, deliverance, and not be born again. Somebody can believe that even somebody he knew, John the Baptist, that he killed as risen from the dead, he may believe the greatest of doctrines, rapture, resurrection, power, healing, miracle, if he has not repented, that faith, that belief in a good doctrine does not save him. Somebody can believe those doctrines, Bible doctrine, standard doctrines, and still perish and still go to hell because he believes it with the head. He does not turn his heart unto the Lord. Where do you stand? doctrine and is still contending for the faith was delivered unto the saints as faith in salvation taking root in your heart faith in holiness taking root in your heart have you repented of all the evil works murderous works devilish works that you have done son Give me your heart, daughter. Give me your heart. Are you just believing a doctrine like Herod, like the Pharisees? The Pharisees believed in resurrection, but they were not converted. Are you born again? Are you converted? Or just believe doctrine in the end? And he said unto his servants, This is John the Baptist. He is risen from the dead. Therefore, mighty works do show forth themselves in him. He was actually talking of Jesus. And Jesus did many mighty works. Three things we're looking at. Number one, his mighty works of total kill. Number two is miraculous wonders of true conversion. Number three is miracle working ministry in tender compassion. Look at number one. Number one, his, referring to Christ, his mighty works of total kill. Look at that again, Matthew chapter 12, chapter 14, verse 2. It says, and said to his servants, This is John the Baptist. And said privately to his servants. He didn't say that in the public. He didn't come to an open place to say, People of Israel, I took a wrong step. I killed John the Baptist. No, no public confession. And I'm hearing of him now that he's doing great, mighty works. There are people who keep their belief private. And they can tell their servants, they can tell their household members, you know, that man is of God that man is a good man that man is a just man that man is walking sincere miracles in the name of his Savior Jesus Christ but they cannot have the courage to come out in the public and announce and publicize this is the truth where do you stand are there things you believe privately and you tell the closest people to you but you cannot announce publicly nationally worldwide that this is the truth he told them privately this is john the baptist he is risen from the dead. Therefore, mighty works do show forth themselves in him. Herod, 
this one is not not john the baptist john the baptist had finished and fulfilled his cause this is jesus this is the savior this is the redeemer he is not dead yet but because he's the very son of god mighty works do show forth of him look at what verse 14 in verse 14 jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them and he healed their sick he healed their sick that's the mighty work of total kill it will kill you he must heal you he has not changed he has not changed he's still in the ministry of healing the sick jesus christ the same yesterday and today and forever in mark chapter 6 verse 2 mark chapter 6 verse 2 and when the sabbath day was come he began to teach in the synagogue and many hearing him were astonished saying from whence are this man these things and what wisdom is this which is given unto him that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands that's christ mighty works of kill and healing acts chapter 10 verse 38 how god anointed jesus of nazareth who went about he anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power it's not the rising from the dead that causes the healing it is the anointing of the holy ghost our power that's why he opened the book and he said the spirit of the lord is upon me for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor to open the eyes of the blind and to heal the broken hearted and he closed the book and he said before he died before he died this day is the scripture fulfilled in your eyes before your eyes because it was anointed of the holy ghost of the holy ghost and with power and he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him not because he died and rose again for god was with him his partnership with the heavenly father his connection with the power from heaven for god was with him herod did not understand that he thought you have to die and rise again before the mighty works will be done through you christ did mighty works of total kill look at number two here number two his marvelous wonders of true conversion you know there are some people that will say uh-huh healing 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 kill 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 i bought salvation the healing brought the people to jesus so they can hear the word of god and once the kill the healing the deliverance and the casting out of devils once that has brought them to christ they will now preach the word of repentance to them they repent they believe on the lord and they are saved mark chapter 2 reading from verse 5 when jesus saw their faith he said unto the sick of the palsy son thy sins be forgiven thee that's conversion because that's what he came for he came to seek 
and to say that which was lost son that sins be forgiven thee look at verse 9 there verse 9 whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy that sins be forgiven thee or to say arise and take up thy bed and walk then in verse 10 but that ye may know that the son of man has power on earth to forgive sins it says to the sick of the palsy verse 11 it says i say unto thee arise take up thy bed and go to thy and go thy way into thine house and then verse 12 says and immediately he arose and took up the bed and went forth before them all in so much that they were amazed and glorified god saying we never saw it on this fashion he healed people he also saved people luke chapter 19 we're reading from verse 5 and when jesus came to the place he looked up and saw him and said zacchaeus make haste and come down for today i must abide at thy house and then in verse 6 he tells us in verse 6 and he made haste and he came down and received him joyfully verse 7 and they and when they saw it they all murmured saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner look at verse 8 the confession of the man and Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord behold Lord the half of my goods I give to the poor conversion a change of heart a change of life and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation I restore him fourfold look at verse 9 it says and Jesus said unto him this day is salvation come to this house for for so much as see also is the son of abraham look at verse 10 here is what he came to do for the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost there were conversions there were kills there were conversions number three now number three his miracle working ministry we in tender compassion tender compassion john chapter three we're looking at verse two the same nicodemus came to jesus by night and said unto him rabbi teacher master we know that thou art a teacher come from god for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except except god be with him and then in verse 3 jesus answered and said unto him verily verily i say unto thee except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of god his ministry was a ministry of miracles of tender compassion in acts chapter 2 reading from verse 22 acts chapter 2 verse 22 ye men of israel hear these words jesus of nazareth a man approved of god among you by miracles and wonders and signs which god did by him in the midst of you before he died it's not the death then the rising after that that brought the mighty works before he died he was approved of miracles 
of signs and wonders among you as ye yourselves also know and now we come to point number three point number three the conqueror's mighty works now risen from the dead how can we today while we're still alive how can we walk mighty works how can you like elijah like elisha how can you like moses like joshua also work mighty works how can you like jesus christ our lord and savior also work mighty works we're looking at colossians chapter 3 from verse 1 if ye then be risen with christ seek those things which are above where christ seated on the right hand of god verse 2 set your affection on things above not on things on their set your affection your focus your desires your gaze set your mind set your affections on things above not on things on the earth look at verse 3 for ye are dead for ye are dead and your and your life is hid with Christ in God you are dead and you rise from the dead even in this life before you actually go to die you are dead and your life is seen with Christ in God and you set your affection you set your mind on things above not on things on the earth if you knew what that meant and you did that you die you rise from the dead mighty works will come through you a better amen, amen. dead what does that mean one you are dead to sin and you are dead to sinfulness they knock at the door those sins you say no i'm dead when i was alive living in sin i could be jolted i could be aroused and i could give me to that now i'm dead dead to sin dead to sinfulness dead you are dead to the world and you are dead to worldliness you are dead and your life is seen with christ in god when you are truly dead to the world and you are dead to worldliness and you rise again with an heavenly minded nature mighty works will come forth through you you are dead you are dead to corruption you are dead to pollution the corruption of the world they don't interest you what do they get in their corruption they get money they get property they get land they get whatever you are dead to their corruption and to their pollution when you are dead like that and you rise as a conqueror mighty works will show forth out of you you are dead dead to criticism and uh, comment the criticisms of the world sometimes if you are alive sometimes if you are with them the criticism will punch you pin you it will be fiery pungent but when you are dead it's like those nerves are dead it doesn't have any feeling 
what they say, their comments, and their criticism. You are dead to them. And when you are dead and you don't even feel it, you're moving in your way. And, and you know, that's how we even succeed in life. Apart from mighty works, if we're going to succeed, you have to be dead to their criticism. If you're going to live your life, a victorious life, you have to be dead to their comments and their criticism. You have to be dead to their persecution and the pain. You know, if every little persecution, every little contradiction, every little opposition bites you and it goes right to the very center of your heart, it is like they put that deadly poison in your heart. Every vision will die, every skill will die, your hands will be down, your life will be down because you are not dead to the persecution and to the pain. But when you are dead to the persecution and you are dead to the pain, your life will move on, mighty things you will do in Jesus' name. When you are dead, dead to the problems of the world the hover around you they surround you the problem and even the pleasure everything the world is offering and you know if you're too mindful of those problems and you're not dead to them and rise again and rise above every perplexity every problem every pain every pleasure if you are dead to them you will soar up like an eagle in jesus name when you are dead to the anger of the world they get angry like Nebuchadnezzar got angry and he looked at Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego he was furious but those you know young people they just looked at him they were dead to his bragging they were dead to his anger they were dead to his annoyances he easily gets annoyed you know and if you don't do this and do this it gets annoyed if you're conscious of their anger if you're conscious of their annoyances you'll never move forward because you know once they're furious and they threaten you and you're not dead to them how can you move forward but when you are dead to the anger to the annoyances of the world or you are dead to those things you will do wonders in this life amen. give me a good good amen. amen when you are dead to your past fear your past timidity the things that just to get you and grab you and pull you down it doesn't take long all your neighbors and your friends and your foes and your colleagues and your classmates they're watching you they see that this thing that's what brings fears to him that's what intimidates her and that is what pulls him down and pulls her down they know how to pull the string but when you are dead to your past fears and your past failures and your past lifestyle and your past responses and addictions when you are dead to them and you rise up in the strength of the Lord that is how in this life you will do mighty works I will do mighty works you do it in jesus name the conquerors mighty works now risen from the dead we're looking at three things here number one the mortified works 
of the flesh. Number two, our merciful works within and outside the fellowship. Number three, our mighty works of faith on the field. Number one. Number one, the mortified works of the flesh. Look at Colos Colossians chapter 3 verse 5. Colossians chapter 3 verse 5. Mortified therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, covetousness, which is idolatry now. If you are not dead to all these things, if you don't put them to death in your life, they will be like monsters, wild animals, that when the heaven says on your search, Mark, go, the monster will pull you down. But how do you kill a monster? How do you destroy a monster? Very simple. Cage it, isolate it, stab it. Cage it, identify the place that monster takes root, where it comes. Cage it, isolate it. Take it away from every other thing in your life and leave it there and then starve it. When fornication wants to come, cage it, let it stay there, don't come here. Isolate it, stay there, don't come here, starve it. It is what you feed that grows. It is what you feed that has strength. It is the bad habit we feed. It is the fear we feed. It is the pollution we feed. It is the monster we feed that grows and then pulls us down. When you don't give that lion, when you don't give that bear, when you don't give that monster any food, in your feeling, in your acceptance, when you isolate it, when you cage it, when you stab it, eventually it will die. I said it will die. You know, but you know, we we'll struggle when that monster rises up and when that thing wants to pull you down. Cage it, isolate it, stab it. It will die. And when you die to do things and do things that no more have any effect in your life, you will soar to the heavens in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 13. Romans chapter 8, and I'm reading from verse 13. For if ye live, after the flesh ye shall die if you live after the flesh all the things that minister to the flesh the pleasure of the flesh all the things that minister to the flesh the interests of the flesh all the things that link you back to what you used to be in the past of the flesh you will die your vision will die your strength will die your power will die the life in you and the liveliness in you will die the vision the goal and then your very life no purpose in life anymore because flesh is too much alive in your life but the next line now if we if ye through the spirit do mortify destroy the deeds of the body ye shall live i will live your vision will live now you have 
to make up your mind which one is more important your life your vision your aspiration your ambition your goal your ideal the mighty works on the one hand on the other hand the flesh the pleasure the fleshly enjoyment and the good feeling you have from that fleshly activity weigh them which one is important feed the one that's important starve the one that is not important the one you starve the one you don't respond to the one you cage isolate and starve that one will die the one you feed the one you respond to that one will live you will live your vision will live your strength will live your power will live and when the good thing lives in your life you will do mighty works i will do mighty works galatians chapter 5 reading from verse 19 galatians 5 but now the works of the flesh are manifest which are these adultery fornication works of the flesh uncleanness lasciviousness look at verse 20 in verse 20 it says idolatry witchcraft hatred variance emulation raw strife seditions and heresies look at verse 21 it says and envies and murders and drunkenness and revelings and such like and such like of the which i tell you before as i have also told you in time past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God now those are the monsters those are the things that want to pull you down and once you feed them they'll be growing once you respond to them they'll be growing and they will hinder you from getting to the kingdom of god even here you'll not have the joy of the kingdom the power of the kingdom the key into the kingdom you will not have the privilege of the kingdom because those works of the flesh they will kill you even here on earth but those are the ones to stab you don't respond to them you don't feed them they will die look at verse 22 it says but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long-suffering gentleness goodness and faith this is what to feed ask yourself as you look at your life when did you have the desire to live when you had love or when you had hatred when you had love when did you have the inner strength to run and to move on courageously when you had joy or when you had sadness when you had joy when did you feel you're on top of the world and nothing could hinder you from getting to the top when you had peace or when you had confusion when you had peace the point is stop the things that bring you down stop the things that destroy you and feed the love the joy the peace the long suffering when did when were you happy within yourselves then something happened and happened and happened again and you were calm you were cool you were courageous you didn't blow up you didn't criticize anybody you didn't fight anybody you had long suffering that's when you had joy and said praise the lord for that long suffering feed that long suffering do it again 
feed it again, feed it again. It will become something that will propel you to doing the mighty works. But if you give time to short temper, no long suffering, you are up, you are come down. You give a chance to hatred, to sadness, and to confusion, you will come down. But you will not come down. I will not come down. I will not come down. Feed the fruit of the Spirit in your life and starve the works of the flesh. It says in verse 23, in verse 23, meekness, temperance against such, there is no law. Look at verse 24 there. In verse 24 there, and they that are Christ's, have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lots. Let's look at number two here. Number two here, our merciful works within and outside the fellowship. We're looking at Matthew chapter 5, reading from verse 6. Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. Blessed are they that you hunger and thirst after righteousness. Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness. You're not hungry and thirsty for unrighteousness. You're not thirsty and hungry for corruption. You're not thirsty and hungry for the corrupter. It's like, you know, you've been, you've come to church, you've come to the fellowship, you've done this and done that, and then you get back home. It's like you've missed the corrupter. You've missed the corruption. And now you're hungry and you're thirsty for unrighteousness. Such people do not do great things in the kingdom of God. The Lord is looking at them. They're not hungry for heavenly things. They're not hungry for righteous things. They're hungry for the flesh. They're hungry for corruption. They're hungry for fleshly things. It's like... I traveled out and now I come back and I've now, I missed you. I miss the things we used to do together. But the people who are going to do mighty things, and I have them here today. Up there, I have you there today. You'll not be hungry for those things of the flesh anymore. Blessed. At they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. The Lord will fill you up. Look at verse 7. Verse 7 says, Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the merciful. It's human nature, depraved nature, to be cruel to other people. That one has done that, cruel to her. That one has said that, cruel to him. But if the nature that is changed, transformed, turn around, that's always looking at, how can I be merciful today? I'm blessed and the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. I didn't hear an amen. amen. You'll obtain mercy. Yeah. There are people, like in the stories we heard in the primary school, that will punch somebody and say, bring out something sweet. There are people that will be cruel. Anytime they want mercy from others, they do the opposite. Jesus said, that's a contrary law. Life does not work that way. If you're going to have mercy, be merciful. If you're going to have compassion, be compassionate. If you're going to receive good things from other people, be good as well. Blessed and be merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. 
you'll obtain mercy and then it says in verse 8 it says blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God pure in heart you will see God yeah. on your way home you will see God yeah. back at home you will see God yeah. when you pray you will see God yeah. and finally on the final day when the dead shall rise and the saints of God shall be cut up going up to heaven that will be your day you will see God in Jesus name Micah chapter 6 verse 8 in Micah chapter 6 verse 8 he has showed thee O man O woman what is good and what does the Lord require of thee but to do justly to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God that's a Christian life that's God's own expectation and he has shown you man woman brother sister he has shown you members of the family of God and what does the Lord require of thee but to do justly to love mercy not once in a while not occasionally not when people make you happy not when people give you what you want every time to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God our merciful works within the fellowship and outside the fellowship look at number three here number three our mighty works of faith on the field mighty works somebody there said mighty works now Paul is gone Peter is gone John is gone Stephen is gone and Philip is gone and all those people that did mighty works in the New Testament now it is your turn say it is my turn you know sometimes when something is said and you even repeat it and deep deep down in you you don't believe it you not even try if you see somebody sick you're not you'll not say i'm going to pray for him for her you're forgotten what you said in the church you are the next one yeah. who will be the next i said will be the next and the lord will place you at the next level in jesus name mighty works of faith on the field say that our mighty works of faith on the field make it personal my mighty works of faith on the field as we go to the field and we touch people's lives we'll do mighty works you will do mighty works when we were growing up as toddlers we tried to stand up then we fell down we tried to walk without holding something then we fell down did mommy say that's all right that's enough don't try it again did she say that she encouraged us and she said great my baby is walking great and then when you pronounce the first word i didn't pronounce it well you wanted to say papa you say dada did uh, daddy say that's enough you don't know how to pronounce daddy dada stop it did they say that when you begin you may not 
do it mightily it may come like you are rising you are falling go on doing it it will be perfect Amen. you're praying for the sick and then they get healed gradually you want instantaneous don't worry go on it will happen Amen. why because we have mighty works of faith on the field it will happen in jesus name look at john chapter 14 verse 12 john chapter 14 we're reading from verse 12 verily verily i say unto you he that believeth on me she that believeth on me the works that i do shall he do also The works that I do shall he do also. Yeah. And greater works than these shall he do. Yeah. Because I go unto my Father. And then in verse 13, in verse 13, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Verse 14, if ye ask anything, who are the ye? What are they? Are you going to ask? Uh -uh. Let pastor come. Pastor will ask for this one. But you are next on the line. I said you are next on the line you know if we don't start we will not know we can do it and the Lord has put the key in your hand the word in your mouth if he ask anything in my name say it if I ask anything in his name, he will do it. Say that again. Now we have to count one, two, three. Number three now. If. Your victory has come. Yeah. Your progress has come. Yeah. Mighty wars will begin from you in Jesus' name. Yeah. You died. You have risen from the dead. Now, the beginning of mighty works in your life. Yeah. It says, when he heard of the mighty works of Christ, he said to his servants, this is John the Baptist. Mighty works do show forth in him because he's risen from the dead. Uh-uh, Herod, we are the people. I said we are the people that lives in the kingdom is greater and higher and mightier than John. Brother, sister, today you have risen from the dead. And mighty works do show forth in your life, in your ministry, in your faith, on the field, in Jesus' name. Rise up and tell the Lord a new thing is beginning today in your life. A new thing is beginning today in your ministry. Mighty works, mighty works, and merciful works, miraculous work doing showing forth out of your life. Tell the Lord, and the Lord will confirm it in your life in Jesus' name. Are you praying? Are you praying? Are you talking to the Lord? Are you saying, Oh Lord, here am I? Let the past die. 
let the flesh die let all those sins that have been bothering your life let them die and let the new creature a new conqueror a new champion rise up in your life a mighty work shall be done through your life by faith in the fellowship on the field everywhere anywhere you find yourself in Jesus name open your mouth and tell the Lord tell the Lord tell the Lord tell the Lord let the past die let the past anger die let the past annoyance die let the past fear die let the past annoyances die let the past intimation die let the past lifestyle life, life, life die let the past response to the world let it die let the worldliness die let the evil thing die and let the weakness of the flesh die let the corrupter die let the corruption dry let the pollution dry and come in a new life and that new life will bring forth mighty works will bring forth miracle working power will bring forth merciful works tell the Lord tell the Lord here am I today let the past die let the past die let the past die and that same ministry of moses and that same ministry of joshua and that same ministry of elijah and that same ministry of elisha and that same ministry of paul let that same ministry of peter of stephen and of philip will be manifested in your life mighty works greater works great works of healing great works of deliverance great works of conversion great works of cure and great works of compassion through you through you through you if you never try what you have never done you'll never see any good any any new thing but when you say when you say i forget the past i'm dead to the past I'm dead to the world. I'm dead to their criticism. I'm dead to their corruption. I'm dead to the compromise. I'm dead to the past annoyances. I am dead. I am dead. I am dead to the past pain and to persecution and to contradiction dead to the past and then you come alive in that new nature in that new power you come alive in the new life of resurrection the mighty works mighty works will be done in you and through you in you and through you make up your mind i'm the candidate i'm the candidate for new works for mighty works, for miracle working power, I will go out like never before. I will do what I've never done. I will suspend, I will mortify all those characteristics of the past. And then I show my hunger for righteousness, not for righteousness, I show my thirst and hunger for higher things not the lower things of the flesh i will show my desire my aspiration my ambition for the mighty works of the lord not for the meaningless mean actions of man but i will give myself in a new way in a dynamic way i give myself holy and completely unto the Lord then the mighty works will begin to show it themselves of your life of your life those monsters the fleshly things stop them to death all the things you've been doing that make you a so-so Christian make you an average christian make you a superficial christian all those things that came to your life all those things that normally show up in your life notice them isolate them cage them stop them and then new power new authority 
a new outreach, a new vision, a new miracle working power will show up in your life. Bury the, bury the past, all the pleasures of the flesh, all the things that make you fall and rise forward and backward, and then you are happy, then you are sad, and things that make you unstable, isolate them, cage them, stab them, and now you can rise up in the strength and the power of the Lord. A mighty work shall be done through your life. Mighty work shall be done in your family. Mighty work shall be done as you pray. Mighty work shall be done as you approach the Lord. Your word will be a word of decree. A word of decree. You'll be able to say like Elijah according to my word according to my word and great irresistible power will flow through your word great things god will do great things god will do you are the next you are the next and the lord will find you established at the next level. Find you. Where is he? Where is she there? You will do what you have not done before. You have mightier works than what you ever did in your ministry, in your life before in Jesus' name. Let the past be dead. Let a new life rise up, triumphant, victorious in your life in Jesus' name. Resurrection power now in your life. The past is buried. A new level is going to be established in your life if you accept that raise up your hand and believe in the depth of your heart you will not be as weak as you were before mighty works attached to your prayer mighty works Attached to your fasting. Mighty works attached to your ministry. Mighty works, mighty achievement attached to your profession. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I pray, take every son every daughter every brother every sister out of the past life and ministry and profession of failure and defeat in jesus name the past dead past character dead past Defiling association dead. Past defeat and failure dead. Now open our graves. Let the righteous rise up. A new strength, a new character, a new power, a new prophetic utterance. Let the new life rise up in everyone lord for this brother this brother this brother this sister this sister this boy this girl those on top those on the ground everyone everywhere now a new resurrection power a new life a new life 
a new life that mighty works will be done through everyone in jesus name as your people go out they go out in new strength they go out in resurrection power they go out as champions they go out as conquerors and lord herod will hear the world were here our neighbors who swear here that we one and all have risen from the dead and that mighty works do show forth of all our brothers and ministers our sons our daughters our boys and girls in jesus name confirm it in every life let it start today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Our mighty works of faith. Amen. Amen. I said, Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name, we have received a blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we are grateful unto you for this service. I want to thank you and bless you for everyone in the church and those who logged in. I'm just asking that as the blessing has been pronounced, I'm asking, Holy Father, it shall be permanent in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It is written that let it start today. Amen. Your past is buried. Amen. As I've been pronounced, new thing has started as we are living in the church right now in Jesus. Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Greater than your amen, amen. the Lord will confirm in Jesus' name. As you are going home, you will not lose anything that God has already deposited in your life. It will be physically manifested as amen. you are leaving the church going home instantaneously in Jesus' name. Amen. And this month of July, everything that concerns you, the Lord will perfect it in every area. In Jesus' name. Amen. As the Lord is doing wonders in this family, that family, you will not be left behind. In Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Blessing will be challenging blessing. Amen. Breakthrough will be challenging breakthrough. Amen. Victory will be challenging victory. Amen. Healing and miracles will be challenging miracles in every family. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. We give you the glory and the honor. Hallelujah. In Jesus' precious mighty name, I pray. Amen. 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 God bless you, everyone. Amen. Amen. Brahmede, what? The prayer of faith shall do what? Save the sick. You're already <laughs> healed in Jesus' name. You've heard about the mighty works of faith on the field. So we trust.